Hello YouTube, it's Robin McClendon here. I'm in my studio and we're back to working on our book. I'm back from Germany. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed the vlog from last week. I really wanted to try to share as much of as, as, as much as I could and I am just not a vlogger. I forget to do things or forget footage, but I got a decent amount that I was that uh, my videographer was able to put a nice thing together. So I'm glad you guys enjoyed and appreciated it. So we're here back um, working our jelly journal. For those of you who are just stumbling upon me, my name is, once again is Robin McClendon. I'm a mixed media artist. I do um, printmaking, mono printing, um, using the gel plate here on um, YouTube and in my communities because it's such an accessible plate um, way to do printing. Um, I'm also painter, um, book artist, so, and we work a lot on collage. This year is Tamashi Collage over in Patreon. I'll be doing a little bit of collaging here, but we're doing full collage in Patreon this year. Um, so if, there, if you're at all interested in it, jump in and join me. The links are below. Let's see, I think that's all the housekeeping. Let's get into today's video. So we're, we're continuing to work in my book, Gel Plate Printing for Mixed Media Art. And we've already done some of the one, and you know, we're just, this is an a la carte book. So we're just kind of going to, we're going to go through the chapters, but then we will be doubling back, um, doing different techniques, different ways. So it's just not a one and done. Um, this is designed to, for the techniques to build on themselves. But we're just kind of kind of loosely go through and then you can see I've already been printing <laughs> loosely go through and then um, come back. So this chapter is uh, um, etching, simple etching and masking on the gel plate. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do some of that. But as opposed to doing the masks, we're going to do. Um, we're going to do we're going to use some saran wrap. And I'm going to do some of my scripting and we are going to do that on top of a page that we're just going to pull with color. So we have a couple of going already. Oh, I love, I love these, love this, that old wall that we did. This was the, you know, the two color, one, two color, this old wall. So we're going to kind of do this idea of creating line so you can do masks the etching I'll, we'll, we'll do some etching in the plate in, in the uh, so you can see what I mean by that and so let's get going I already have like I said I've already been working so the plate is pretty responsive and I already got a lot of good crunch down which I love so I've gone since I was in um, Europe I tell you my color palette has tweaked so these are sort of the colors that came up now these are my traditional colors here you know I like this this sort of yellow oxide um, I like working with my black my sumis um, I like the blue but this blue became um, cerulean blue versus my blue grays which were more sort of desert tones this is a lot brighter blue to go with this darker palette and when it mixes with it when these two mix the cerulean and the yellow oxide I start getting more of these green tones in there I'm using my off-white so it just tweaked the pattern palette just a little bit but it definitely comes off quite a bit different so I'm really liking this palette and so I'll continue to work with it you know those of you who took my color theory course and have been hanging out with me. I always talk about not only do the seasons change the color for me, but travel. It seems like when you go somewhere else and you're, you're just surrounded by different colors, sometimes you don't even register it. Like you don't really think about it when you're just out and about. But when you go to do your art, I know for me, when I go to do my art, that's when the colors come up. And I was starting to work. I was doing the show and just doing a lot of demos for various stores and what have you that were shopping for the gel plate and for the book. And I was just not happy with my palette and I just kept on working and I, what's missing, what's missing? I just had to play until I figured it out and I just needed a different blue because the skies and everything, the blues are different. Um, it's, it's more, it's like a little more overcast. It's, it's just different. And so this kind of tweaked in my palette. So that's kind of what's going on with the color palette. And I'm sure it'll change a number more times before 
we're done. Now, before I get going, I'm going to just miss my pages just a little bit because I just want to soften it. You can do that if you're working with, like I am with these, um, with the, um, the handmade papers, this hundred percent cotton. Um, I it, traditionally in printmaking, you do wet your printmaking papers, um, and you keep them under blankets until you're getting ready to use them because they etch better. They take up the, the, the images on the plate better. It, they take the inks in better. So I'm just kind of doing a, kind of like an old, a technique, a, a traditional technique, because I feel like I can do it on those papers and my plate is pretty responsive. So let's see what we get. I'm going to do, I'm kind of, I think I'm going to do two colors. Since I have all this down there right now, I start off with two colors and I may come back and um, put something um, over top of it you know then do a layer over top but let's just see because it's a lot of good stuff down here and I kind of have a feeling I should be able to get it pulled got to make sure I'm working this whole plate because um, because um, I have this large sheet that I need to put down right and I just hope that I'm going to pull up a lot of um, so I want enough down there where I'm going to get that tension but I don't want too much because I want to get that bottom layer let's just see okay let's see what we get and I think also what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it stay down here. I'm not going to pick it right up. So let's. So I've learned that it's a good idea to really push down in this area because these papers are so thick. And then push in this area by lifting up this side. And, uh, And then getting in underneath here. So make sure you do the same thing. You work it in your book. It's thick. You know, you can work back and forth side to side. And so I'm going to just let this sit on here for a little bit. I'm going to I'm gonna turn the video off and I will be back. Because I really want this to see if we can pick up. A lot that's on there and the longer we lay this on let this stay on there and let it dry the better so I'll be right back okay I let that sit about 10 minutes just so you guys know I really wanted to let it sit so let's just see what pulls off this plate now okay so what I'm gonna do is flip it over because it's coming off nice but I find it's easier to pull it off of this surface than it is to Um, oh yeah, look at that. Great, we got a good pull. Yes, yeah, see the plate really clean. So sometimes just relaxing, letting it stay on there. And uh, you really get a good clean pull. Sorry if I'm knocking the camera there. Okay. Okay good this is really good I mean I got all of those other layers that was that were down there before so we really got a little bit more old wall and I think what I'm gonna do since I really want this to be moody I'm gonna take I have some um some sumi water here so it's gonna kind of give me a nice sort of gray palette The way to kind of get some staining without uh without it being too much you know and it just gives us a, some harmony going here oh i love it 
some of the areas that are still white we don't want that oh that's good you can see the way the ink is going to stain it's not really dark this is just my my brush cleaning water but I really like using it because um you get just the right amount of color without it being too much and because I like a my palette's really moody this works in nicely if your color isn't moody then just you know take whatever color you like and in an ink or something and just let it you know put a lot of water in it so that it almost just becomes a stain and you can definitely do this in any color okay Okay, this is good so that just flushed our color out nicely and even here you can see how that edge where the paint was you see how it just gets just this real subtle kind of grunge, grunge and it's not even dry yet okay now what we're going to do is this is good okay now what I want to do is I want to come back and get some more of this line here which I think I'm going to do in the panes gray because we've got a nice amount of white down there so let's go ahead and do this um, where do I want to put where do I want to put this I have it open okay so I want to use saran wrap and where's the piece I had oh boy did I drop it yeah I did so just use this good old fashioned saran wrap. I use mine over and over again. So, but you can use old plastic, whatever you want to use, whatever your thing is around plastic, you know, kind of have at it. But I like, I'll just use that over and over again. I'll just kind of hang it on the wall or whatever, cause you can um, do that. But I'm going to use some Payne's gray and I'm going to do some scripting. Okay, so we got some scripting going there. Let's go ahead and put our saran wrap down. Okay, so just go ahead and kind of Push it out as far as you want. I'm kind of making my line a little wide, which is good. And then, kind of make a little more room here, guys. Because what I like to do is put my. So I'm going to put the book down. And we'll put that there first. And I'm going to lift this up. And I think what I'm going to, I want to cut, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it between both. So let's just do it like this. Okay. So it kind of, it kind of goes in the middle of both signatures. So just get a good connection. And this is just an old um, printmaking technique. Before we had gel plates and stuff like that. It's just as way, Trent, you know, you'd always work on um, a plastic. Like we would use acetate sometimes, like any of the ruby lists and things like that that we have around the studio. Um, you can use wax paper. It works nicely too. Okay. We'll lift this up so we get that which is lovely really really like that so I think what I'm going to do is 
What do I want to do? Kind of want to put a repeat a little bit, but I would turn it upside down and let's do this. I'm going to put it on this corner here and I want to put it this way. I kind of want to just do it off the page a little bit. I'm going to hold it up because I don't want it to transfer anything but just this. Yes, see it just extended some marks there, which is nice. Okay, so lay this down here. I'm going to put this to the side right now, let, let that dry. And while that's drying, we still have this here, so we can take, um, I have... Some um, pieces that I had been printing. So the first thing I want to do is just go ahead and you know what let's just this is a nice piece let's just go ahead and get a good print because we can put this down and get this whole print which will be nice. And this is some extra pieces here so let's just go ahead and get this because you still have plenty of stuff on here. Did I put down the wrong side? <laughs> I did. So it's almost dry. You can see that. Probably not going to transfer that much more now. So then I just kind of layer and just keep on transferring. And sort of have, this is what we did in, in the Patreon session. Did a lot of these um, pages, backgrounds, and then did some of the various... We'll pick this up. So that looks good. And on that background, see this, it's this interference in the green and it's so pretty. So let me, I wanna reverse this. So I wanna put this at the bottom. It's more here, so let's just go ahead and pick some more of this up. And, um, then we'll do one more pull, and um, with that pull, we'll do some of the etching from this chapter. It's masks, um, and this is this isn't using a saran wrap isn't exactly a mask. It's more of a transfer, but it's a similar concept for you know um, creating marks on the plate. Now, we have this, let me see, I want to pull it on. Let's just keep on using the menu paper, it's been working nicely. Okay, so let's go ahead and put some of the oxide down. Mm, put that. Um, Definitely have to put this green pearl. I love this stuff. And where is my Payne's Gray? A little bit of that because I we have this black marks down there, which I really want it to to pull up. So let's get some more white and some more of this down here. Okay. So let's go ahead and roll this out. I think that's pretty good. So I have a nice, um, it's sort of a semi-thick um, layer because um, I want it to be enough paint to move around. So you can just use anything that's blunt, um, like a back of a paintbrush is good. You know, the end of a feather is nice. 
I'm use this paintbrush. It's blunt. So I'm going to use some some of my scripting. Um, so the etching is this. You're just moving into the paint. And, you know, you're moving it aside. So, of course, you get this. What, which would be kind of considered an etching on a monoplate. If it were plastic or glass, we would do a similar thing. Um, on glass and um, plexi, we would also used to use um, like long, like toothpicks. You can use um, Q-tips. Um, anything that sort of etches, it just moves stuff aside, depending on how fine you want the line. And of course, um, on, if we were working on like metal plates, we would use various metal kind of etching tools because of course the metal plate could take it, right? So you can modify it. But the idea is you're just sort of moving and you're making space. Um, now, if we had a solid color down here already, right? Or if the paper were, well, this is going to be sort of translucent paper, but... If we had a solid color down and then we put this on top, you know, the etching will come through in that way. But this is good. Oh, my God. This is really nice. So I need to let this dry, but you can sort of see. We're just drawing into, can you see that? It's the translucent paper, so it's going to be harder until it dries. But the nice thing about that, that line is going to show up beautifully when it's time to use this as a collage piece. I don't know, like, I think with the change of this palette, things got really landscapey for me or something like that. I really feel like I started, like, it's kind of dealing in these, um, you know, what am I trying to say? Sort of abstract landscapes. And I don't know where that's come from, but I noticed that's sort of been the vibe. So we go with it. Okay, so I'm going to use another piece. I'm using a lot of the menu paper because we're doing a lot of collaging this year, especially in Patreon and what have you. And I really, so I want to make a lot of papers that can be used for some of these collage projects because some of these projects are pretty big that I'm working on this year. They're really large panels and I want to have enough papers. So using your wet strength paper, tissue papers, menu papers, deli papers, whatever is going to give you that sort of translucent. When you go to glue it down, you know, you're getting a really good, um, Adhe you know, adhesion, so, yeah. So let's see what this ghost is going to look like. Okay. And see, with this interfere um, color, you can see it's laying beneath there. So you get this, when it dries, you're going to see it better, but you get this color... But it's, it's just subtle. I mean, it's, it's not subtle, but maybe it's a little, it's lighter, but it's still rich. Um, so when these papers dry, they're just uh, the best. So there we have it. I think I'll make, let's do one more pull. I'll put a white down. Because we still have stuff down there. Let's get it all. And then that's everything. So... Go back and look at our book again. So we're going to be moving along. And then these papers that, a lot of these collage papers that I'm making, you know, I will periodically be going back through the pages of this book and adding bits that I feel like are relevant to the earlier pages. So we're going to be collaging in our art book as well. Because this is our art book of the year, right? So let's get another... piece of this menu paper and this up and then we'll look at our book again and uh, yeah that would be this week's entry into our art book and you can already see where it's really looking let that sit for a minute you can see we're really getting just this beautiful 
love this and you see as it's dried it just really dried down nicely behind um, what we have going on so we'll come you know we're going to come back and work these but it's already looking good so yeah that's that we'll let this dry I really love this technique because you get a really good I feel like I get a really nice scripting without um, and I still have a nice complete line and it's not really thick you still have that nice mono print look to it let's pull this last piece and you guys have a wonderful week in your studio thanks for hanging out with me of course please make sure to like hit that like bell and subscribe if you're new to the channel so you can get all the notifications every Saturday we meet here come join us in premiere if you don't already and uh, yeah oh look at that see that we'll see what the white did the white gave it even more body so we have these two different types of um, backgrounds this is the interference in the green this is the white you see sort of how different they are and yet we're still pulling up a lot of information and as, as, as we go along, you can see the etching still hangs in there. That's why we call it etching, because really, if you do a thick enough layer, you'll keep on pulling up and you'll keep on getting, I don't know if you can see it, but you keep on getting that line. See, that line keeps on showing up. It's nice and subtle, but it adds a lot of information to the print. So there we have it. All right. Well, love you guys, as always. Have a great week, as I've said. And... Um, don't forget to hit that like bell, like button, of course, as always. And I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.